Good afternoon, everybody. Early this morning, a friend messaged me and she was telling me about a video that I might want to check into. And the video shows a young woman running through Satsuma Park in Pasadena, Texas. And while she's running through the park, she's being chased by somebody that's driving an SUV. The strange incident was caught on the video by a nearby resident security camera on February 25th. As the woman comes into the frame, you can hear her screaming. And then just shortly after that, you can see the SUV barreling through the park behind her. Once the woman runs out of the frame and into the wooded area, you can hear her scream again. And the driver of the SUV can be faintly heard telling her to get into the car. Now, the SUV is believed to be a great Ford Escape. The police are unclear on if the young woman is okay, whether the man driving hit her with the SUV, or if he forced her into the vehicle. And they're also unclear on what started all of this. Like, was it a random act of violence, or is it domestic related? The video has been posted on Pasadena Police Department social media pages. From those pages, it's been shared thousands of times. If you have any information on who this woman is, who the man is driving the SUV, or anything related to this case, you're asked to call 713-475-4822. And as soon as I know more on this, I'll be updating y'all. Now, I'd also like to take a few minutes and talk about a couple of recent person, I mean, recent, recent missing persons cases. Clemson police are asking for help in locating 21-year-old Andrew Earnhardt. Now, there's a lot of conflicting information in this story as far as the last time he was seen or heard from. And a few other details, too, is, is kind of jumbled. Um, so, if you heard it a different way, don't come at me saying that you heard it a different way. I'm just reporting what I have found. Now, according to WYFF out of Greenville, the last time that Andrew was seen or heard from was on February 21st at his apartment in Clemson. He's listed as an endangered adult and it's believed that he's more than likely traveling on foot. His wallet was found in the Lake Hartwell area and the lake has been searched and they had to call off the search for the night because it had gotten too dark and I believe they're supposed to pick it back up today. Now, so far, they haven't released a very detailed description of him, but I can tell y'all that he does have blonde hair, and from what I have seen in pictures of him, he looks like a very small brain person. Now, if you know anything about his location or circumstances around his, you know, disappearance, please call 864-624-2000. A couple of weeks ago, I brought to you a couple of missing persons cases from South Carolina. One of those cases is Alexis Ware, or Lex, as she's known by her friends. Last night, Dateline released an article about the case. Alexis's mom, Alberta Gray Simpkins, told Dan, uh, Dateline that the weekend before she disappeared, she was with the family all weekend, and she could tell that something was bothering her daughter. Alexis told her mom that she was afraid that she wasn't going to make it to see her 30th birthday. Late that Saturday night, Alexis also told her mom about being followed, but she didn't go into a whole lot of details in it. The next day, which was Sunday, Alexis left her family's home around noon, and that was the last time her mom saw her. Later that Sunday evening, the father of Alexis's youngest child called Alberta, asking if she had seen Alexis. And he also told her that he had met Alexis at a gas station and she left both of the kids with him. Now, they had originally planned on all going over to his mom's house, but when Alexis got in her car, instead of following him, she went quickly around his car and she took a right at um, the red light that was close by the gas station. She was gone. And it was like she had left in a big hurry. Now, when the family hadn't heard from Alexis by February the 1st, her sister called the police to file a missing persons report. There is surveillance video footage of Alexis meeting with that ex at the gas station, and nothing seemed wrong until the way she left out of the parking lot. 
Now they have checked out all the alibis, you know, for that ex during that time frame, and all of those have checked out. As you may recall, Alexis's car was found in McCormick County a few days later, and inside of that car, they found her phone, her daughter's phone, her ID, her purse, and a bag of clothes. Now, Alexis has no ties to anybody in the McCormick area, as far as her family knows, so they're really puzzled by it. And I'll post a link to this article that I mentioned from Dateline in the episode description so that you can read it in its entirety. But if you have any information on this case, please give the Anderson County Sheriff's Office a call at 864-260-4405. And they want you to reference her case number, which is 2022-01369. Now, on that same episode that day, I mentioned a missing 15-year-old girl from Blacksburg, South Carolina, and her name is Cheyenne Bing. Now, since I first talked about this, I'm not able to, like, find any updates. Um, I don't know if she's been found, but it seems like, you know, if, if she had been found, this would have been made known to everybody. Now, I did reach out to a couple of sources, uh, but they haven't reached back, haven't heard back from them yet. But if you know anything on Cheyenne's disappearance, please give the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office a call at 864-487-2747. That's all I have for today's episode. I'll have those phone numbers that I mentioned in the episode description. And I'm going to put the link to that Dateline article in the description as well. Y'all have a good day.